Welcome to O. Mihira's English Listening Test for Healthcare Professionals. Sample Test 6. This test has three parts. In each part, you'll hear several different extracts. At the start of each extract, you'll hear this sound. You'll have time to read the questions before you hear each extract, and you'll hear each extract once only. Complete your answers as you listen. At the end of the test, you'll have two minutes to check your answers. Part A. In this part of the test, you'll hear two different extracts. In each extract, a health professional is talking to a patient. For questions 1 to 24, complete the notes with the information you hear. Now, look at the notes for extract 1. Extract 1. Questions 1 to 12. You hear an endocrinologist talking to a patient called Mihira. For questions 1 to 12, complete the notes with a word or short phrase. You now have 30 seconds to look at the notes. Good morning, Mihira. Please, come in and have a seat. Thank you, Dr. Norris Jakalo. So, you've been referred by Dr. Louis for a follow-up on your prolactinoma diagnosis. Can you tell me a bit about why you first visited Dr. Louis? Well, it started a few months ago. I noticed my vision was a little blurry and I was also having these persistent, excruciating headaches, especially around my temples. My periods had become irregular, and I was feeling tired all the time. I see. Mihira, did you experience any other symptoms? Yes, doctor. My breasts felt tender, and I also felt like I had lost my libido. Oh my god. I'm tearing up as I say. Don't worry, just relax, Mihira. Take some breathing time. Hmm. I'm okay. Well, I even noticed some milky discharge sometimes. It was all very concerning. Absolutely. And what did Dr. Louis do, Mihira? He ran some blood tests and then referred me for an MRI. The results of brain imaging confirmed the prolactinoma diagnosis. Right. Did Dr. Louis start any treatment? Yes, he prescribed me a medication called k -bergolin. I've been taking it for the past two months. Excellent. Mihira, have you noticed any improvement in your symptoms since taking the medication? Um, the headaches have definitely gotten better, and my vision seems clearer. But I'm still feeling a bit tired, and the breast tenderness hasn't completely gone away. I understand. Now, let's delve into your medical history a bit. Mihira, have you had any other significant health conditions in the past? Not really. I did have a tonsillectomy when I was a child, but that's about it. And are there any medications you take regularly? Ah, besides the mentioned one Mihira? No, just vitamins and supplements. Perfect. Now, tell me about your lifestyle and work. Mihira, do you have a physically demanding job? Ah, I'm a librarian, so it's mostly desk work. I do like to go for walks and light yoga in my free time. I see. And finally, are there any known allergies you have, Mihira? Yes, I'm allergic to penicillin. Okay, well, I thank you for sharing all this information, Mihira. It's very helpful. So far, I think we're on the right track. However, I'd like to recommend a few next steps. Okay, what are those? Firstly, I'd like to repeat your blood tests to monitor your prolactin levels and assess the medication's effectiveness. Mihira, we'll also schedule another MRI in a few months to track any changes in the tumor size. Additionally, I want to discuss some lifestyle modifications that can support your overall well-being and potentially aid in managing your condition. 
that all sounds sensible. I'm happy to do whatever is needed to manage this condition. That's great to hear, Mihira. Extract 2. Questions 13 to 24. You hear an orthopedic consultant talking to a patient called Mihira. For questions 13 to 24, complete the notes with a word or short phrase. You now have 30 seconds to look at the notes. Good morning, Mihira. Please, have a seat. It's good to see you again. How have you been feeling since your last visit? Good morning, Dr. Scheider. Honestly, a bit better than last time. The pain in my shoulder isn't quite as sharp anymore, but it's still there, especially when I lift my arm above my head. Oh, I see. Mihira, have you noticed any other changes in the symptoms since your last visit? The swelling seems to have gone down a bit, but the area is still tender when I touch it. And sometimes, at night, it aches like a dull throb. Um, interesting. Is the range of motion in your shoulder any better? Ah. I've been avoiding repetitive movements with my arm, and I've started doing some gentle stretching exercises. I'm not sure. Sometimes it feels a bit easier to reach behind my back, but other times it still feels stiff. And reaching overhead is still a bit of a struggle. Mihira, have you been following the RICE protocol, rest, ice, compression, and elevation, as we discussed? Hmm. I've been trying my best, Dr. Scheider. I've definitely been resting the shoulder more, and I use the ice pack a few times a day. The compression bandage, well, uff, I confess I haven't worn it as much as I probably should. It's a bit uncomfortable, especially at work. I understand, Mihira, but our consistent compression is crucial to reducing inflammation. Perhaps we can find a more comfortable band or explore alternative options. Now, tell me, Mihira, have you made any lifestyle modifications since our last meeting? Yes, actually. I've stopped doing my usual yoga routine, and I'm being more mindful of my posture at work. My desk setup you know, ergonomics and all that. Excellent. Those are excellent steps, Mihira. Your commitment to treatment is commendable. Have you experienced any other issues besides the shoulder pain? Not really, Dr. Scheider. Just the usual aches and pains, you know, getting older isn't always graceful. Um, I hear you. Well, Mihira, the good news is your progress so far is encouraging. However, since the pain persists, I might recommend an ultrasound to get a better look at the bursa and surrounding tissues. An ultrasound? Is that really necessary? Mihira, it would provide valuable information to guide our next steps. If the bursitis is responding well to conservative treatment, we can continue on this path. If not, we might need to explore other options, like corticosteroid injections. I see. Well, if it helps make sure I'm on the right track, then I'm okay with the scan. Wonderful. I'll arrange for the scan and let you know the details soon. In the meantime, please continue with the RICE protocol, wear the compression bandage as much as possible, and Mihira, maintain your current lifestyle modifications. Remember, consistency is key. Absolutely, Dr. Scheider. Thank you for everything. It's my pleasure, Mihira. We'll see you again in four weeks for a follow-up appointment, but sooner if you experience any regressing symptoms or any new concerns. That is the end of Part A. Now, look at Part B. Part B. In this part of the test, you'll hear six different extracts. In each extract, you'll hear people talking in a different healthcare setting. For questions 25 to 30, choose the answer A, B or C, which fits best according to what you hear. You'll have time to read each question before you listen. 
Complete your answers as you listen. Now, look at question 25. Question 25. You hear a morning briefing in a hospital ward. Now, read the question. Here's Mihira, a 25-year-old female who was admitted two days ago with acute pancreatitis. Nasty flare-up, poor girl. I see her labs. Lipase is through the roof. Any idea what triggered it? Doctors suspect gallstones, but Mihira's ultrasound wasn't conclusive. They're planning an ERCP tomorrow morning. Okay, got it. What about pain management? She was crying earlier. Ah, Mihira is on morphine every four hours, but it's not cutting it. The oncologist wants to avoid opioids if possible, given her past addiction issues. Hmm, tricky. Have you tried anything else? Nerve blocks, maybe? Not yet. The doctor wants to see how she responds to the ERCP first. Uff, listen. Keep a close eye on her vitals, okay? Especially BP and O2 SARTs. Pancreatis can get messy quickly. Sure, will do. Anything else I should know? Allergies, drains, catheters? No drains or caths. Allergies to penicillin and shellfish. Oh, and one more thing, Mihira's brother was here earlier, creating a scene. He's convinced, she's being poisoned. Keep an eye out for him, and don't engage if he gets aggressive. Right, poisoning. Okay, thanks for the handover. I'll be sure to update you in the morning. Question 26. You hear a discussion between an endocrinologist and a nurse. Now, read the question. Good morning Nurse Rodriguez. I need an update on Mihira's case. I understand she was admitted for bursitis. Yes Dr. Patel. Mihira's bursitis seems complicated. Her blood glucose levels have been erratic and we've been struggling to control them. Diabetes complicating bursitis is challenging. Are we adjusting her insulin dosage accordingly? Yes, but that's not all. Mihira is also on a course of corticosteroids for bursitis inflammation. It's making glycemic control even trickier. I see. We need to strike a balance. Any issues with her blood pressure? Surprisingly, no. But Mihira developed a persistent low-grade fever, and there's concern about infection. The antibiotics don't seem to be as effective as expected. Complicated indeed. We need to consider possible drug interactions and monitor for signs of immunosuppression. Also, I'd like a consult with our rheumatology team to rule out any underlying autoimmune conditions. Question 27. You hear a general practitioner explaining prolactinoma to a patient called Mihira. Now, read the question. Good afternoon Mihira. I've reviewed your recent tests and want to discuss the findings with you. It appears you have a prolactinoma, a non-cancerous tumor on your pituitary gland. This tumor is causing an overproduction of prolactin, a hormone responsible for breast milk production. Now, Mihira, it's crucial to understand that prolactinomas can lead to various complications. Not only might you experience irregular menstrual cycles and infertility due to disrupted ovulation, but the excess prolactin can also cause galactoria, the spontaneous flow of milk from the breasts. Additionally, elevated prolactin levels may impact bone health, increasing the risk of osteoporosis. We'll need to monitor this closely. 
Treatment options include medication to reduce prolactin levels or surgery in severe cases. It's also worth noting that prolactinoma can sometimes affect other pituitary hormones, potentially leading to issues like hypothyroidism or adrenal insufficiency. We'll need to keep an eye on these aspects too. Question 28. You hear an orthopedic consultant explaining bursitis to a patient called Mahira. Now, read the question. Mahira, your shoulder pain presents a complex puzzle. The MRI confirmed bursitis, an inflammation of the fluid-filled sacs cushioning your joints. However, it also revealed a partially torn rotator cuff tendon and early signs of osteoarthritis in the glenohumeral joint. This trifecta throws a wrench in our usual treatment plans. Mahira, the bursitis itself likely stems from the rotator cuff tear. The inflamed bursa is nature's attempt to compensate for the instability caused by the torn tendon. But treating the bursa directly, say with steroid injections, might mask the underlying tear and hinder its healing. Conversely, focusing on the tear with surgery could aggravate the bursitis. Osteoarthritis adds another layer of complexity. Mihira, anti-inflammatory medications, typically helpful for bursitis might worsen your pre-existing joint degeneration. This leaves us walking a tightrope, balancing immediate pain relief with long-term joint health. So, what's the plan? We'll need a multi-pronged approach. Mihira, physical therapy will be crucial to strengthen your rotator cuff and stabilize the joint, reducing stress on the bursa. We may also try non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, carefully monitored, to manage pain and inflammation. Injections, if considered, would likely be targeted towards the rotator cuff tear. Question 29. You hear a nurse explaining rice protocol to a patient called Mahira. Now, read the question. Mihira, I understand your ankle's been giving you trouble. Remember the RICE protocol. It's a handy acronym to help manage swelling and pain after an injury like yours. Rest, first things first, Mihira, let's give that ankle a break. Avoid putting weight on it for the next couple of days. Crutches or a scooter can be your best friends right now. Even elevating your foot while lying down helps reduce blood flow and swelling. Ice, this one's a bit tricky, though. Icing the area numbs the pain but can also slow down healing. So Mihira, here's the trick, ice for 20 minutes, 4 times a day, but wrapped in a thin towel to avoid skin irritation. And never fall asleep with an ice pack on. Compression, a gentle hug for your ankle. Mihira, wrap it with an elastic bandage or wear a compression sock to keep the swelling down. But be careful not to over-tighten it, or you might hinder circulation. Elevation, remember that gravity. Prop your ankle up above your heart whenever you're sitting or lying down. This helps drain excess fluid and reduce inflammation. Think pillows under your ankle, not balancing acts. But here's the catch, Mihira. You also have pre-existing arthritis in your ankle joint. While rice helps with soft tissue injuries, it doesn't magically fix arthritis. So, it's crucial to follow your doctor's advice about medication and physiotherapy to manage the underlying joint condition. Think of rice as a temporary relief squad while we work on the bigger picture with your doctor. Follow these steps Mihira, listen to your body, and don't hesitate to reach out if anything feels off. We'll get that ankle back in tip-top shape, chronic arthritis and all. Question 30. You hear a physiotherapist explaining the necessity of ergonomics to a patient called Mahira. Now, read the question.
Mahira, I get it, you think neck and back pain are just part of the desk job package. But trust me, ergonomics isn't just about fancy chairs and fidget cubes. It's about preventing problems before they start, and in your case, it could be a game changer. Your MRI showed some worrying early signs of disc degeneration in your cervical spine. Mahira, it's not a full-blown herniation yet, but that constant slouching you do. It's putting immense pressure on those discs, like squeezing a balloon until it bulges. Now, don't panic. This isn't a dead-end sentence. But it's a wake-up call. Here's the tricky part, Mihira. You also have carpal tunnel syndrome. Ergonomics can help there too, but we need a nuanced approach. So, we'll need to break up your typing with stretches and focus on strengthening exercises. It's a two-pronged attack, Mahira. Addressing posture with proper chair height, monitor placement, and core strengthening exercises to support your spine. And then, tackling the repetitive strain with breaks, stretches, and targeted hand exercises. Think of it as an investment in your future self. Ergonomics might not be instant magic, but it's about building long-term resilience. Ignoring it, on the other hand, could lead to bigger problems down the line. So Mihira, let's work together to tune your work machine, build that core strength, and give those stressed discs and overworked hands a much-needed break. It's time to turn that desk job into a pain-free zone, Mihira. You deserve it. That is the end of Part B. Now, look at Part C. Part C. In this part of the test, you hear two different extracts. In each extract, you'll hear health professionals talking about aspects of their work. For questions 31 to 42, choose the answer A, B, or C, which fits best according to what you hear. Complete your answers as you listen. Now, look at extract 1. Extract 1, questions 31 to 36. You hear an interview between Dr. Mihira and an interview on the doctor's experience in treating prolactinoma. You now have 90 seconds to read questions 31 to 36. Good afternoon Dr. Mihira. Thank you for taking the time to discuss your experience in treating prolactinoma. To start, could you provide an overview of what prolactinoma is and the different types you've encountered in your practice? Certainly. Prolactinoma, a benign neoplasm arising within the confines of the pituitary gland, precipitates an excessive secretion of prolactin. In the course of my clinical tenure, I've navigated through the discernment of two fundamental classifications, microprolactinomas and macroprolactinomas. Microprolactinomas, characteristically diminutive, tend to manifest dimensions of sub-10 mm, whereas macroprolactinomas exhibit a more expansive morphology, surpassing the 10 mm threshold. 
The discernment of these categories becomes paramount as the dimensions play a pivotal role in dictating the symptomatic manifestation and, consequently, the therapeutic stratagem employed. Mihira, could you share an example of a patient you've treated for prolactinoma? Navigating this complex medical scenario, we embarked on a treatment journey focused on restoring hormonal balance. Through a combination of medications and careful monitoring, we aimed not only to alleviate symptoms but also to enhance the chances of fertility, marking a holistic approach to the patient's well-being. In unraveling the layers of this case, the intertwining challenges of hormonal management and fertility considerations emerged as key focal points in providing comprehensive care. Mihira how about a recurring patient with prolactinoma? What complexities did you face in their case Mihira? Well, I had a male patient with a recurring prolactinoma. Despite an initially successful treatment to lower prolactin levels, highlighted a complex scenario during follow-up. Addressing this challenge underscored the importance of continuous, long-term monitoring and the flexibility to adapt treatment plans based on evolving circumstances. As we delve into these intricate cases, the emphasis on vigilance and personalized adjustments becomes paramount for optimal patient care. That's indeed challenging. On the positive side, Mihira have you encountered cases of fully cured patients? Yes, I had a memorable case involving a woman diagnosed with a microprolactinoma in her early 20s. Through ongoing medical care and vigilant monitoring, she successfully attained normal prolactin levels, and the tumor size markedly decreased. Surprisingly, even after 35 years, she stays connected and has experienced no recurrence. This enduring success story serves as a powerful testament to the positive outcomes achievable through early detection and sustained long-term follow-up care. Fascinating. Moving on to causative factors, Mihira do you often come across genetic factors contributing to prolactinoma in your practice? In some instances, I've observed a familial tendency toward endocrine disorders, including prolactinoma, hinting at a potential genetic influence. Although the genetic connection isn't always straightforward, it suggests a familial predisposition to specific hormonal imbalances. However, it's crucial to acknowledge the substantial impact of environmental factors and sporadic mutations in shaping the complexity of these cases. As we navigate the intricate interplay of genetics and environmental influences, understanding these multifaceted origins becomes paramount in providing comprehensive medical care. Now, regarding treatments for prolactinoma, Mihira could you elaborate on the different approaches you employ? The treatment approach depends on various factors, including the size of the tumor and the patient's symptoms. For microprolactinomas, medications like dopamine agonists are often the first line of treatment. These drugs help reduce prolactin levels and may shrink the tumor. Surgical intervention becomes necessary for macroprolactinomas that don't respond well to medication or if there are complications such as visual disturbances due to compression of nearby structures. Extract 2. Now look at Extract 2. Questions 37 to 42. You hear an orthopedic consultant talking about a case study conducted by Mihira on bursitis at Mihira Research Center. You now have 90 seconds to read questions 37 to 42.
In the realm of musculoskeletal disorders, the enigma of bursitis beckons our attention. Defined as the inflammation of the bursite small, fluid-filled sacs that cushion and lubricate the joints, this condition stands as a testament to the delicate equilibrium within our bodies. Dr. Mihira, an esteemed orthopedic consultant, unfurls the layers of a captivating case study conducted at the Mihira Research Center, shedding light on the intricate dance between anatomy and pathology. Let's explore the intricacies of bursitis and gain insights into Dr. Mihira's perspective. According to Dr. Mihira, bursitis transcends mere inflammation, like a story written by the patient's lifestyle. It's a dynamic exchange influenced by diverse factors, including occupational demands, daily activities, and even congenital predispositions. Dr. Mihira views each case as a unique story where these elements intertwine, weaving factors of complexity. As we delve deeper, the study's sampling methodology becomes a cornerstone. Dr. Mihira emphasizes the nuanced selection process, ensuring a diverse cohort that mirrors the multifaceted nature of bursitis. The importance of this sampling methodology transcends statistical significance. It's a canvas painted with varied hues of age, gender, and occupational exposures, enriching the study's ecological validity. Navigating the mystery of why bursitis, we embark on a journey through the intricate web of contributing elements. Dr. Mihira sheds light on the interconnected nature of repetitive motions, joint overuse, or sudden impact, serving as catalysts in unraveling this perplexing condition. The fusion of biomechanics, inflammatory cascades, and environmental triggers not only deepens our understanding but also underscores the intricate web woven into the origins of bursitis. Unraveling the threads, we find that bursitis, much like a complex narrative, weaves together a diverse range of factors, each playing a role in the unfolding story of this medical enigma. In this intricate journey of treatments, Dr. Mihira explores a diverse array of healing techniques. Ranging from common pain relievers like nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, to hands-on physical therapy and corticosteroid injections, each method is carefully chosen to suit the individual story of the patient. This delicate balance between alleviating symptoms and tackling the root causes showcases the skillful craftsmanship required to effectively manage bursitis. As the medical tapestry unfolds, it becomes a personalized roadmap to recovery, reflecting the artful blend of science and patient care. Beyond merely easing pain, treating bursitis holds profound importance. Dr. Mihira clarifies the chain reaction, showing how unaddressed bursitis can evolve into persistent joint problems, hampering daily activities and overall well-being. These repercussions extend beyond the individual, affecting broader societal productivity and imposing additional burdens on healthcare resources, emphasizing the crucial need for proactive management. As we delve into the broader consequences, the urgency of taking preventive measures becomes even more evident. In the final notes of the case study, resembling the climax of a musical symphony, the seamless resolution unfolds, showcasing the success of a well-rounded approach. Dr. Mihira highlights the joint efforts of patient and physician, maneuvering through the complexities of personalized care plans to compose a healing melody. This real-life scenario stands as proof of the effectiveness of a holistic approach in addressing the varied challenges presented by bursitis. As we delve into this orchestrated journey, it becomes evident that the collaboration between patient and physician plays a pivotal role in achieving a harmonious resolution. That's the end of the listening test. Now check the answers. Thank you for watching. Please, like this video and encourage us. Subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Kindly comment your suggestions and help us do better.